Then he goes, Grenadier. Look at that. And it's Harold Osmer with L.A. Carr talking about the Ineos Grenadier today. Look at that, L.A. Carr. Car culture at ground zero, and we're looking at the brand new vehicle, Ineos Grenadier. By coincidence, this is the closest I will ever get to driving a Formula One car. The heck does that have to do with anything? Well, Ineos sponsors, or is one of the primary sponsors in the team of Mercedes. Look at that. Now, I'm pretty sure this whole thing had something to do with a few too many beers. Okay, gin and tonics, maybe, at a pub. That's right. The guys are sitting around, and they're lamenting the loss of the excursion-type vehicles. All the road vehicles, the off-road vehicles, have become street vehicles now. You know, think of the G-Wagon, things like that. Great off-road vehicles, and then they civilized them. So these guys are sitting around in the pub, a few gin and tonics, and they decide, you know what? We need to do something about this. And they have the wherewithal and the means, and they just said, you know, let's do this. And they've got a bunch of prototype vehicles, and they invited me out. So I get in a truck, and I drive out to Santa Clarita, way up in the mountains. Southern California is a wonderful place to live, by the way. We got tons of this stuff. This is 20 minutes from downtown LA. Look at this. Now, there's a lot of videos online. You can go look at and see these vehicles out there on their excursion, and I encourage you to go take a look at it. In my case, I was at the Rower Off Road Vehicle Park in Santa Clarita, just off of Sierra Highway. They got us all set up. Now, one way you can tell you're dealing with real truck guys is when you show up with a real truck and they all start falling over themselves and want to get pictures and everything else they can send to their dads back in North Carolina and Great Britain. And that's what they were doing, so we knew we were in for a good time. The other way you can tell is they bring real trucks. Now, these are all prototype vehicles that we got to drive this time around. We didn't get to drive them on the street because they're not quite ready for that. But they're, they're testing these things, and they want the word to get around, and I'm helping spread the word because, dang it, man, these things are way cool. Now, if you look at their videos online, what you'll find is some engineering discussions about why this big square body. Well, it's the most practical type of square body. Well, why a solid axle? Well, it's because if something breaks, it's a solid, more sturdy piece as opposed to independent suspension, which, hey, everything's a trade-off, buddy. And uh, that's just how it is. Now, here's the undercarriage of this guy that's up on the ramp. It's a well-used undercarriage, as you can see. And this is, again, pre-production, so there might be some skid plates and added cover things that are going to wind up in place here. But uh, that's how it goes. And, you know, this is a real nice-looking vehicle. I had several of them out there. I didn't get to just look at them. I actually got to drive them. Here's one they had on display. It was, had a little less dust than some of the others. And I thought it was damn fine looking. If you're one of the off-road guys and you like to go out and do that sort of thing, it becomes a lifestyle. And that lifestyle demands a certain amount of functionality to it. Here you got the rock bar down at the bottom. You can also use it as a step to climb inside. It's waterproof pretty much up to the edge of the seat. And in the back, you can hose it out if you need to. You can hose out this whole dang thing, man. They get drain plugs in the whole bit. You pull the mats out. There's a storage in the back. Of course, you got fold-down seats and all these kind of things. Do I really need to explain that to you? But look at this. This is that big rectangular cabin in the back. And that just shows you how practical it is to have this particular style. And you've got a split rear door. You can open the little one instead of the big one in case you're in an actual parking lot somewhere. You don't have to worry about it. And yeah, man. I was very impressed with the Enios uh, Grenadier. Not a big off-road guy, but I can appreciate fine engineering when I see it. For instance, you can stand on the roof. I can stand on that dang old roof. I'm 200 whatever pounds. And you got up to 300 pounds on the top there. And you got strapped tie reels there. You can strap everything down to it. And you get a winch fore and aft on this thing um, built inside. They don't like it to extend out. And that's, you know. 
street legal rules and all that sort of thing. And we've seen plenty of these things. You know, Jeep and Toyota and all these guys, they all got these things. But this is specifically designed for the actual serious excursion type guys. See those roof panels? Those pull out so you can climb up, get your picture of the giraffe, and then duck back in before he comes and eats you. Giraffe's not going to eat you. Look at that. That's the overhead switch panel, which is uh, breakers and switches to control a lot of different things, but there's pre-wired breakers up there, so if you want to add accessories later on, um, lights, um, power outlets, things of this nature, it works out great. This is the one I actually drove off-road. They got that nice trail out there at the Robert Park. Now, I would give you some video of that, but I was a little busy hanging on to the steering wheel to bothered taking any video of that and besides it would just be you know a guy driving around in the dirt there's lots of that on their website we'll put a link down in the description it's the Enios Grenadier named after the pub of which this vehicle was conceived which I think is wonderful hey it's Errol Osmer LA car